Hey friends, Sleepy here, and welcome to another episode of my weekly playlist series. It's Friday, which means it's time for me to let you guys know about the games I've been playing during the past week. Let you guys know my opinions, my thoughts on the games, whether I think you guys should check them out or not. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the games that I shared with you today. Let me know if you played them, what your thoughts were, maybe there's something you didn't like about them, maybe there's something you did like about them. Let me know about the games you guys are playing as well, as I do appreciate hearing about the games you guys play. You guys have piqued my interest in quite a few titles. And if you guys have a suggestion on a game you think I should check out, let me know. I always enjoy getting recommendations from you guys of games to play. I've got a nice list of games to eventually play from your guys' recommendations here in the past of me doing this series. So keep those uh, coming. This week we're going back to the past to the Sega Dreamcast. And there's been one title that I have been playing a lot this week. And that is Record of Lotus War. Now, this is a European PAL copy of the game, which I did buy at one of my local uh, game stores. And I'm able to play this on my American Dreamcast because I actually have a boot disc that came with my copy of Shenmue 2 for the Dreamcast. It was exclusive to uh, PAL territories and uh, Japanese territories. You know, we never got it released in America for the Dreamcast. We got the uh, original Xbox version. But... That has the boot disc in it, and I'm able to use that to play import titles like Record of Lotus War. Now, this, this was released in the uh, U.S., however, it's a pretty expensive title here locally, and at the time, this was uh, a very cheap alternative that they had at the game store. It works great, and I'm really happy to have it in my collection. Now, this is an awesome isometric action RPG for the Sega Dreamcast, a really awesome game. Love this game. I did uh, rent it a long time ago when it was first out, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, at the time, and even nowadays, you know, sometimes people give it the game, kind of call it like a Diablo clone, which it does play similar to Diablo, but it is in its own universe, and it has its own stuff, and it's a game that I really do enjoy. So let's check out Record of Lotus War for Sega Dreamcast.
All right, friends, we're checking out Record of Lotus War today, which I am playing a PAL copy, as at the time it was a lot cheaper to buy a European copy of Record of Lotus War over a North American copy. However, nowadays, even the European copy is expensive, but it's a really cool action RPG for the Dreamcast. I did buy this uh, locally at one of my local game stores for a really good price. And I love being able to play import titles on my Dreamcast thanks to a boot disc, which actually came with a copy of Shenmue 2 for the Dreamcast that I bought. So let's resume my game. I've currently got almost, well, I've actually got over two hours and five minutes into this game. And I love uh, the save feature on this. Let's get that. I'll load it up here and show you guys some gameplay. So it's got pretty decent graphics for an old uh, Dreamcast game, you know, just hooked up to my 1080p TV through the composite cables, you know, the red, white, and yellow cables. Does look pretty good. These crystals are able to save. And it is an isometric view, but you can actually move the camera in three different settings. You can either have it like this way, you can kind of curve it a bit, or turn it this way. So it's really cool. Show you guys the menu. So as any typical RPG, you, know, you have strength, you've got your dexterity, you've got your intelligence, how much damage you do, critical, you got AR, your endurance, magic, all kinds of different uh, settings. You also have a currency, which is this mithril stuff that you find. You have your current level you're at, your XP, your uh, health potion points, your mana points. So you do have magic in the game. And then you're able to equip various items. Or you can have boots. You can have a breastplate. You're able to have a belt on. Uh, you can have a cape or a cloak. You have a buckler. You're able to wear two different rings. You're also able to wear a necklace. You can wear a helmet. And then you can also wear earrings. And you have a variety of different kind of swords and different kind of melee weapons that you can find. Which also is also neat is you can find health potions. However, you can find them full, but you can also find them empty. And then you can actually reuse health potions. Now, usually in games like this, you know, you use a health potion and it's gone. However, this one, they actually get emptied out. And if they get emptied out, you can find a health pool like this. And you actually can refill all your empty ones. So you can actually keep reusing the same health potions by finding these mana pools, which is really cool. Now I will say though that the character does kind of walk a little odd as far as the animation goes. Which I'll give you guys like see how he walks. Kind of odd. And one thing that is a little annoying personally for me is... When you put on different boots, they make different noises. Like so, these are like a metal. Um, these are iron guard boots. So if you notice, they do make a loud noise. Like it mentions that too. Magic shoes with increased protection, but very loud footsteps. So enemies can hear you easier if you make noise. And so they did that. In, they did incorporate that in the game. However, it can be kind of annoying with how loud it can be. You guys can kind of hear, but. Um, you know, it is what it is. You can also check out the cool map. And the map will will build as you run through it. You know, the fog of war will go through. You can also zoom out here and show you guys how big the, the, the world is. And any of those green arrows are areas where I can actually go down into a dungeon or go into a building. Which is really cool. They have a main story to go through, but you can also find some side quests and stuff as well as find characters to uh, interact with. Like there's this um, funny looking goblin and he actually gave me a side quest that I was able to unlock some pretty cool sweet bonus items for my character. So really cool, just pay to explore. But if you guys are a fan of action RPGs like I am, I highly recommend this one. This is a classic old game for the Sega Dreamcast. There we go, to find some monsters to fight. 
And I'm level 5, so these guys are pretty easy to des destroy. That right here is the currency in the game, the Mithril, so you want to pick it up. Um, there's a variety of you've got like skeleton monsters, you've got goblins, you've got spider creatures, you've got all kinds of st demons and stuff. There's a lot of different enemies that you will uh, come across as you play through the story. And of course, the further along you get in the game, the much more difficult enemies will get. If you leave an area and come back, some of the monsters will respawn, which is nice. We've got zombies in the game there, that's who those are, because we're here in a cemetery. And there are little hint monuments here that will give you tips on stuff on how to play the game and everything like that. There's also when you start the beginning of the game, there actually is a tutorial level you can go through which will teach you how to play the game. So it's definitely, uh, you have to go through that initial story log and it'll get you into the game and tell you how to play it and all that. It's got great transition between levels, like it's got pretty quick load times, as you can see, going between those two. Here's some uh, friendly goblins that, um, this is a mission I was able to actually take over this uh, cool goblin fortress, and now I have some goblin minions and stuff. You're able to destroy random chests and stuff, where you can sometimes find items in them, which is cool. And so you have your typical... RPG elements going through the story and trying to destroy evil. So you basically play as an ancient warrior who stopped a great evil and then after the years your character passed away. Well this wizard guy in here, Great Wise Wart, he actually decided to resurrect you in your grave and because he resurrected you, you lost your memories of who you were, but you're still a great warrior. And as you play through the game, your memories are going to be unlocked, and you're going to get back your fighting prowess. So that's how they do it as far as like leveling up your character. No, you used to be a great warrior. Now that you're playing through, you're leveling up, you're regaining your former glory so you can stop the evil that has been resurrected. And that's where the story takes place. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail of it as... I want you guys to experience the story for yourself because this is a heavily story-focused game. And of course you guys know I do not like ever ruining story for you guys. There are um, characters that you can find in the world which you can save and then you can actually recruit them to come to your base here at this Goblin Fortress and they offer different things for you which is really interesting and a really cool concept for a game. I do enjoy the visuals. The music, there's only a couple tracks that play, you know, you have like town music, you'll have like just exploring music, and then you'll have like combat and music, so there's not, you know, as great Ooh. variety as when it comes to music, but it's still pretty decent, and there is a variety of the weapons and stuff you can find. There's also secrets to find in the game. And unfortunately, there is not a strategy guide for this game. As I was looking for one, I could not find one. But there are some excellent guides online to find if you want to be able to get everything unlocked. But if you do, make sure you just explore. Uh, you should not miss anything at all. You can find all kinds of uh, secrets and stuff. And then these goblins here will give you tips and tricks and stuff. So it does pay to talk to everybody because you just never know when you might get a quest from somebody, which is really sweet. You can find extra quests and stuff, and then your character will uh, level up. And you're able to use your items here in these slots. And you also have magic. So there's also magic in the game, which I just learned about. And there's new magic spells and stuff to learn as you play through the uh, story. But a really fun action RPG that I definitely think you guys should check out. And it's one that I'm looking forward to beating here uh, in the, within the next uh, month. I know it's a game that can take like 20 something or more hours to play through just depending on how skilled you are. And if you decide to want to go through and grind and level up, which I love to do in these games, is I like to always be prepared. I hate going into boss battles, because there are boss battles, 
and difficult situations being unprepared. So I like to level up when I can and kill multiple enemies. And then I like to search through these worlds and find all the secrets and stuff because you can find some great items for your character that can really help them out. And I've been able to uh, boost up my character since I started with level 1 and I'm now currently level 5. And I found some really sweet rings and a really cool uh, necklace and boots that have helped me level up my character and give me more strength, more dexterity, more intelligence. And it's really powered up my character. So it does play to... This really pays well to go through and explore everything you can. And like I said, there is a guide out there that you can look up. And use that guide will help you if you want 100% the game. But I just wanted to give you guys a little look here at Record of Lotus War. Really sweet action RPG for the Dreamcast. Hope you guys enjoyed that look at Record of Lotus War. A really cool game for the uh, Sega Dreamcast. I do recommend getting a copy of this game. Just be warned, though, that the year, the U.S. copy is uh, pretty expensive. And even now, looking online for the European PAL copy like this is in that uh, $30, $40, $50 range. So it is a pretty expensive title. But again, since the pandemic set, you know, most Sega Dreamcast games are expensive. But it's definitely a really good game. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm looking forward to finally beating it. As I never did beat it when I originally played it and rented it back all those years ago. It's a really cool a game that I definitely recommend you guys uh, check out. I just have the one game this week to share with you guys though. As I have been putting in a lot of time at work. And so I've really been just focusing on playing uh, one game every week. But definitely recommend checking out Record of Lotus War for the Sega Dreamcast. An awesome action RPG. Let me know about the games you guys have been playing lately, and if you have a suggestion on any game you think I should check out, let me know. You guys always do recommend really fun titles. want to thank you guys for watching. Take care. You guys have an amazing day, and Sleepy will see you next time.